like the star of that show Blackish. She plays the mother, Rainbow Johnson or something like that. Yes, I know her. So a couple of years ago, she was being interviewed on Stephen Colbert and she had won an award and she was like, you know, first she was like talking about how Blackish is giving the voice to black people, this breaking the stereotypes, which of course, you know, I I watch the show because I like to watch shows that are about minorities just to see what the media not just disability, all minorities. So I just like to see what, how they're framing things for all minorities, not just disability. So she was on the show and talking about the show Blackish, giving voice to the black, you know, breaking the stereotypes of what being black is. And then she talks about how she won this award. And she's like, joyfully telling the story. And then I went in the bathroom and my dress was so big. So I went in the accessible stall and I was like, what are you saying? Why are you saying this? And then she's like, yeah. and then I left the award in the bathroom. And I was like, oh. So that was why she was telling the story. And I I kind of got a little irritated because she was like talking about black about rights this. and stuff. And then she's like, and then she's like, oh, I use the accessible stall. And then, you know, so then I started thinking. Okay, so because she could have left that detail out, like she could have been like, I just went in the bathroom stall, not said I went in the accessible stall. So obviously, in her mind, what she did wasn't wrong. And so I'm writing about that, like how I got angry. But then I was like, you know, I shouldn't be angry, because you know, this, we don't teach it in schools, blah, blah, blah you know, all this stuff. And then I was like, but then I got angry again, because I, <laughs> I went on YouTube to try to download it. But I didn't do it right away. And they actually took <laughs> the interview down. And yeah, I was like. Yeah, because a bunch of disabled people probably were like, what in the world? Like, I, I remember you calling me about it. I think if you're speaking out about black rights, then you should take that moment and be like, hey, I did something wrong. I talked about it in this interview. I used an accessible stall and that was not right of me to do. The accessible mm -hmm. stall made for people with disabilities they fought for their rights just as black people have fought for their rights so i felt like tracy ellis ross sort of used that as a you know a teachable moment for her to teach people like hey i messed up thank you and, for bringing that discussion priya because that falls right into today's topic on how i know i was saying that thank you. media mainstream and disabilities first off i want to say Thank you to Pauline for allowing me to host this awesome Crip Chat group. I think you guys are awesome. Well, for me, I would have to say the the show that helped me throughout my childhood when it came to disability and representation was the show Degrassi. And it featured a young man named Jimmy Brooks who was shot and he became paralyzed. So that show helped me a lot. So was any of your experiences the same growing up or? So um, can, I, can I just uh, take a, sorry, can I just take a quick um, time, uh, second to like welcome, because we have some new people like Anna and Hector. Is that okay, Tylia? Yeah, sure. I didn't realize that there were, that there were more people here. No, that's okay. No problem. I just, um, I just want to make sure that everybody feels welcome. And I know some people jumped right into the middle of the conversation. So I just wanted to take a moment to recognize that um, Anna Peterson is joining us via phone and Hector Delval. Um, I'm so excited because I feel like Hector and I have been in conversation for a long time um, over Facebook and he's been posting in the Crip Chat Club Facebook group regarding um, the Zoom events that his that organization is holding. So um, I definitely uh, love to uh, recognize the people that are, are new and welcome back everybody. I know Cecil, we missed you out, missed, you, missed Cecil and Freddie last week and Renee last week. So I'm so glad that they're back. Um, I see. And, and Freddie, it's so good to see that you do some avid reading from behind. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I know it's just a green screen. <laughs> but okay, I just wanted to do that really quick. Um, you know, you got like, for those who are new to this, we don't have any rules. Um, just so you guys we know that we are recording. 
um, and we do put it on YouTube. And today's topic is facilitated by Tylea Flores. And if you saw the, the marketing promos, um, the topic is about media and mainstream and disability. So I'm really excited to have it. And we just actually on Chair Chats interviewed Keely Cat Wells about this very topic. So I thought it was so timely. Um, so Which I watched. I watched that before. I was like, I should watch this before the group chat. So I watched it next. Yay, I'm so glad. And you can maybe chime in during this um, conversation if you if there's anything that you'd like to put in. Well, it's what I'm kind of thinking about because right after that, I saw an interview with Tracy Ellis Ross and I was like, and I still have like this hidden resentment towards her, even though I've kind of gotten over it. But when I see her, I'm like, no. You do, you violate disabled people's rights, and you need to talk about that. So, so I have this hidden resentment against Tracy Ellis Ross. Well, and, and you know, know I girl. and and you know, I know Tylea posed the question for those that are just joining now. Um, if there were any shows that were influential in growing up as a person with a disability, um, and and you know. To answer, I wanted to respond to Priya and Tylea's, and then I'll shut up if that's okay, <laughs> since I'm talking already. Um, so, uh, in response to like the the you know, I feel like a lot of times people with disabilities, we take the time and the effort to support other minorities. Like you said, you like to watch shows and support shows that are giving the perspective of minorities. Um, and I don't know if it's always reciprocated and I don't, I don't know if it's necessarily out of like met malicious intent. It's, it's just, they are ignorant. And so avoid like you writing that article in response to that, I think is so important and tagging her in it, you know, like, I don't, I don't know if there's a way to do that. <laughs> oh, we'll tag her in it. Yeah. Once I do it. <laughs> Oh, uh, you're going in. Because I was like, you broke that interview down. Why did you do that? Because I saw it with my own two eyes. Right. Um, well, and I don't understand why it's so hard to apologize. I don't know if being apologetic and admitting you made a mistake is seen as a sign of weakness. Um, but I don't know why they don't take this as an opportunity and say, oh, my bad. I didn't even think about it. Because I've done that before. Um, you know, you do things unknowingly and, um, but you know, anyway, and then to answer Tylea, Tylea, you are the youngest of the group and you are blessed okay. with so with, um, and I'm so excited for your generation and the generation to come because I feel like there's more visibility of disability on media, but like, I feel like for my people, my age around the forties, fifties mark, and maybe some of you older people can chime in. Like, I don't remember having any role models on TV. So to answer your question, Talia. I'm sorry. I mean, I didn't discover Degrassi till seventh grade, so. Well, well that Degrassi, what year that episode came out? But I actually watched that show too, because, and I know about Jimmy and I, I was like, oh, and I actually had a spinal cord injury then, but I was like much old. I wasn't in high school. I was like, yeah, me and Priya, we bonded over when, yeah. when I was telling her about Degrassi. She's like, I know that show. We all, like, started freaking out. I the original, and the one that Tylea saw is the new generation. So Yeah, same the, Degrassi, here. Degrassi has a history of, it's a Canadian, for people that don't know, it's like a Canadian show about this high school, and they kind of, Talk, you know, they just talk. They talk about the teenage life, but they they do address social issues too in that frame of work. Yeah, and I will say that there is, like, I've read things where uh, people of color with disabilities do talk about white people with disabilities not recognizing black people's rights with disabilities. So there is like this weird circle of ignorance with race between discipline you know so there's all kinds of crazy stuff going on and i'm like oh okay so i've we read just talking about that things intersect like that people who are rich with disabilities maybe who are white and this sort of like trash people who are poor. um or not even just rich but just you know like they like this one black 
disabled activists talked about how um, they were fighting for their rights as white people with other white, you know, and then when the black, when race came in, that white people didn't really want to deal with that. So, but, you know, but I that's agree. what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about the media, which, you know, so go, I will. Well, did everybody see the Democratic National Convention and the kid with the stutter? I was wondering. If anybody yes, I did I, see that. Yeah. And I was going to mention that. Did you like it? I liked it. I mean, I thought it was very eye-opening for that kid to come on and talk about his disability. I thought that was very brave of yeah. him to do that. And I think, I think if we, I don't know what anybody's preference is, but I think Joe Biden and his team have done a great job with representing the disability community within their media and within their campaign. Not up for political debate here, folks. I'm just expressing my opinion as a disability advocate. Well, we're talking about the media there, so, in the, their media. Yeah, but I just didn't want the whole debate. Yeah, I understand, that's cool. What I felt with the media after um, the child with the stutter came on was that all of the pundits kept talking about people with stutters and they did not enlarge that issue to disabilities in general which I didn't really understand. I didn't know if that's something that the media does. Like they'll just talk about one particular problem and they don't say, well, oh, these are for people, people with disabilities. Yeah, they just, just yeah, they, the one. They just talk, yeah, they, they frame stutter as a disability. They're just like, he has a stutter. Right, exactly, exactly. They weren't even <laughs> like considering it that way, yeah. He helped him get over yeah, the I, I think. Well, I think for me, one of my biggest pet peeves when it comes to my condition, like they always say cerebral palsy is a deadly disease, yeah. even in the media. And I'm like, no, it's not. It's a condition. And they make it seem like we're dying. Like when I was 16, for my sweet 16, I was invited to spend my birthday with the Florida Marlins and be a team member. So they did a new, they did a new story on it. And in the new story, it goes... Tylea Flores is 16 years old. She has an extreme form of body palsy, a disease that causes her to be in a wheelchair. Yeah, yeah. No, I've seen that. And actually, I mean, I'm going off on the tangent here, but I had a friend, a gay man friend, who didn't like any of the movies with gay men in it because he said, every time I see a movie about gay men, they're always killing us. We're always dying. <laughs> Somebody's always killing us. We don't have any... Movies where things just go right. <laughs> right, and that kind of reminds me, same with the MS. I've never seen anybody in a movie with MS who wasn't dying. Right. Yeah. That, I think that's the problem. They all want to give us the petty party, like, oh, this person had MS, this person had CP, so they have to die at the end of the movie. And it's like, no, we don't. Can I ask if, if um, people would like to see more of their specific disability, or would... Is it just anybody with a disability that you would feel um, like you that you were seen or heard? I would say for me, I would say any disability, but I would I would have to be both because I want more awareness for cerebral palsy because there's not a lot of it, and even though 17 billion people have CP, and each second a parent is hearing the diagnosis of their child having cerebral palsy so i would like to see more of my condition but at the same time i would like to focus on others too yeah okay i'm just gonna read things in the chat to make sure we bring voice to the people that are putting yeah, in the you. chat um so well uh, while you're doing that i'm gonna say I, oh oh yeah uh, where it would be maybe you know kind of you know have people with like, you know, like, for instance, me, you, and John were friends. John has spina bifida, you have CP, and I have a spinal cord injury. So I think it would be interesting to have a TV show, like, scripted or reality, whatever, you know, kind of addressing different disabilities and showing what they look like, you know, in life. Exactly. And, yeah. Like, I'm going to... Uh, go ahead. 
It's okay. I'm gonna give time. I'm gonna give voice to the ones that are in the chat. Um, so uh, Hector said uh, he apologizes for not being on camera, uh, but he's excited to finally get to to join us, and he would like uh, to see more visibility um, on the media in media via Zoom, Facebook, and other social media. Um, Paul says Tiny Tim theme meet in media. Yes. Yeah. Oh. And then Hector said, I'm always looking for more inclusive awareness and acknowledgement. Yeah. I feel like growing um, up, it wouldn't, like, I didn't, I didn't, wouldn't care if they had no arms and legs or if they were just in a wheelchair or if they were blind, but just having some representation would have been really nice. Yeah. I could see for your generation, because you grew up in, I'm not saying that you're old, Pauline, but you grew up in a generation <laughs> where mm -hmm. the ADA was in past you. Well, so weird I, to think of Pauline I, as the old person in the room. I mean, I'm just I, like, <laughs> who's, are you older than me, Renee? Who's the oldest? Am I'm, I the oldest? I'm lady? the old lady in the group. How old are you? 62. Oh, girl, you look good for 62. I thought you were... That's because you're, you're seeing me on camera up like this. <laughs> I thought you were like 57, girl. You, you, oh, 57, oh, there's a big difference. <laughs> well, I'll be 53 next week, so... I'm so, so happy, bro. But, like, for me, I, uh, I wasn't, I wasn't I disabled you. when I was younger, like, as, you know, growing up as a child, so... But I never really saw any TV representation of disability, which I think, you know, if you're non-disabled, that it is important because that's how you learn. And that's, you know, kind of the piece of it. That's how we learn how that people with disabilities are, you know, are like you know, not framing it like, oh, you're disabled, they're going to die at the end of the thing, and, you know, at the end of the show, they're going to die, or something <laughs> tragic is going to happen, <laughs> or, you know, and so, you know, like, I never had that kind of representation, but I think it was important for, to me, for me growing up to have that representation. I mean, I did have my mom who was disabled, so I think it kind of informed me in reality and not through television. You, you know, it's funny that, it's not funny that you bring that up, Priya, but I would like to see a show with a mom with a disability. Yeah, definitely. I mean, yeah, there was no TV shows where parents had disabilities, like. Well, I mean. You know, actually, um, uh, <laughs> so a produ production company did approach me about, you know, a reality show about parenting with a disability. And then when they, we were in conversation, they said, so do you have other friends who are parents with disabilities? And I'm like, um, that's not necessarily how it works. Like we don't all hang out together in a club. Like I have other mom friends, but they don't all have disabilities. Like, so there's this, there's this um, sense that like, if you look at the current shows, Little Women of LA, um, oh, within the last five years, push girls like they all hang out together, or yeah, at and least it's how they the position. Reality show. Can I, I say something about a uh, little woman LA and push girls? I love the push girls, but little woman LA it just makes people with disabilities look ratchet, right? Yeah, those are reality shows, yeah. Like, push girls, at least yeah. you get a little bit of drama and you get a little bit of inspiration in between. But little people, L.A., they just make us look like ratchet, crazy people. Mm -hmm. Well, they do that and that's for the what, ratings. That's what they I do didn't that like. for the ratings. Did that for the ratings, yes. Because if you look at it, they've been going, what, eight seasons now? And push girls only lasted two. Yeah, which is sad because Push Girls had such a good representation. It was all positive. They were, were all married. Some were divorced. Some were and getting maybe, into relationships. Maybe like what was going on with the Push Girls is they were trying to push it. In, not, you know, sorry, I'm using the word push, but you know they were trying to move it in that you know in that direction to get the ratings up. And maybe the women were like no or something. You yeah, know. I. You know, actually, guys, I was supposed to be on the TV show Catfish 
a few years ago. <laughs> I, I was supposed to be on the TV show Catfish because they wanted my story because they saw a young girl with a disability talking to a guy online. And me and my friend, we staged this. <laughs> the producers call me. They're like, hey, we want you on the show, but we'll give you X amount of money. I can't disclose it, obviously, because this is being recorded. We'll give you X amount of money, but we have to speak to the catfish, and we know that the catfish is, isn't real before you meet them. Is it what? That they know what's going to happen before you meet the catfish and stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah. And they, the more drama they can get out of the story, the better. I mean, reality shows aren't really real. They're scripted. They're not to real. Yeah, the, there's no acting. When I live with people that, I, because you know, when you live in LA, you meet a lot, of, you know, the producer of this, they're this, and they're, they're, they're an A, you know, assistant director. You know, you meet all these people in the industry that are working on shows. And some of the people I talked to, they were just like saying how they couldn't get jobs because that was like really when reality TV was really like, it was early 2000. And reality TV was like really the big industry that was moving into Hollywood. And a lot of script writers and people that were worked prior to that were saying they were getting pushed out because it was cheaper to get they didn't really need script writers i mean that's probably changed now but but it was just like cheap to make the show so that's why they were really into the reality show, because they didn't have to pay actors they had a director but the director they didn't have to like put as much money into the show so they were cheap to make and they got high ratings because people yeah. would watch and I feel like with Push Girls, there wasn't enough drama for it to go on a third season. And it's sad because those are the shows we need. We don't need little people, LA. We don't, we don't, we don't want the trashy stuff on TV representing people with disabilities. But you know, they, the reality shows, I don't even watch reality shows. The reality shows that I've heard, like this woman that has like eight children at the same, you know, like. <laughs> oh, keep, keep walking, mom. Walking. I don't even want to watch Up that. That, mom. that yeah. just, yeah, it sounds gross to me. So I'm like, so I don't even watch. I don't really watch. Oh, I, don't, rid of my uh, Please, I don't, I yeah, can't, Kate I can't stand Jocelyn. Because you want to know something? When her child was yeah, diagnosed with ADHD, yeah. she sent him to a mental in institution and kept him hostage. Who was that? Kylie? Kate Gosselin. I think she's the Octa mom, right? On TLC, know. she she, she, put, she put her kid in a mental institution. Yeah, all because he had ADHD and she didn't want to deal with it. And the father, I don't know if you guys know this, but the father, John Gosselin, was on Dr. Oz and he was ta talking about it. Hmm. Do you guys They're feel divorced? Yeah, okay. I know, but. He 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 went on he went on Doctor Oz and he spoke out against Kate. So uh, I think uh, reality TV is more or less like entertainment. People like to entertain, like to be entertained. So uh, I do agree with uh, we need more reality shows. Not we need more shows. That promote disability disability awareness, right? Cause a lot of people don't know what it is. So it's like they may say they may know you deal with cerebral palsy or spinal cord injury, but everybody doesn't know what that is. So if they don't know, that means um they will criticize it or talk negative about it. Mm -hmm. uh, like the demons that be ignorant mm -hmm. because uh, they don't understand it. Right. And Paul says, so like, oh, sorry, go ahead, Cecil. But it's like, like, I mean, so here's where I'm at. It's like, I think in reality, 
for me, I like adaptive sports. I'm good with details. I like adaptive sports. But I mean, it didn't come to me. I had to, I had to go after it. You know what I mean? To, to enjoy these activities. So my question is this, as a disability community, how can we approach being on uh, the media, being on camera, and the disability, disability awareness? How can we approach? So, I, sorry, go ahead, Tylia. I think we could approach it by sharing our stories in a positive way and documenting it ourselves. Well, yeah, I mean, I think we, like, the disabled community just needs to make their own shows, like, and it not being produced by some big network. And, you know, we have YouTube and social Facebook and all this stuff, and you can share all that stuff on there. So, yeah, we don't need Hollywood. We don't need to depend on the major. Yeah. The money may, I mean, I'll talk, I'll refer back to Pauline did an interview with this woman. What's her name? Tell Keely, me her name. Keely Catwells. Keely Catwells, who's like this British woman. And she, she, like one of the things she talks about is the people with the money make the decisions in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. So she's like figured out how to, you know, try to finance, like work with financing big, major projects movie projects to include people with disabilities but mm -hmm. you know, don't have to go big money it can be just a you know diy able to diy it and diy like i was oh. at a board meeting yesterday and the guy at the art museum was like oh and then this person had this person play and then they went back to their town and they told everyone about our the gallery and so the word spread about the gallery and I told Colby that's what DIY is that's the DIY ethos Colby is like you put the information out there and slowly one by you know even if you get reach one person that one person is going to say hey I saw this interesting thing and send a YouTube link to their friend and you know so you know it might be in small increments but I think that's a way to kind of fight against the money makers and what and the money makers are always going to go for ratings they're not going to go for reality and paul brought up a good point in the chat pauline i don't know if you saw yeah. that he said write books yeah write the books like like he has yeah and he said shows like little women portray us as freaks they don't want to take the time to research and then Hector, and Hector, if you want to talk, you don't have to be on camera to talk if you want to. You're welcome to just jump on in. But he did write some good points. I think our biggest problem is organization. Disability community seems to be very unorganized, and yet there's a big opportunity here because of COVID and all the mental health issues slash dis disabilities that we can bring more awareness of real disability issues more visible on media. And I think that's, you know, like, the difference, social media, we have access to social media. So now everybody can be a star, right? Like anybody yeah. and everybody can be a star, right? And so Priya, what you're saying is, and what Paul is saying, and I think we're all saying this is, we all put stuff out there and it slowly starts to organically grow. Word of mouth and, the, you know, <clears throat> And, and we get to choose how we represent ourselves. We get to choose how, you know, that was one of the reasons I created One Leg Up Productions is because like, why am I waiting for permission? And what Hector is saying is a good point. Like we're all doing like our own things, but how can we find a way to organize it? So, because like me as a person, Priya with DIY Able, Tylea Stomping, on CP, Paul with his book, like Cecil, like we're all doing stuff, but mm -hmm. like together, the force is so like use the force is so much greater. May the force be with you. <laughs> right, right. Well, I will do want to ask Hector what he his thoughts are. So the disorganization, I feel it comes from okay because we're not all living in the same neighborhood. 
you know, like we're not like Pauline said, disabled people aren't necessarily hanging out together. We are here, but um, but outside of Crip Chat, we're all in different cities, and and you know, then we also have our own disabilities. So I feel like I have a spinal cord injury. So I have to be honest, like I didn't even really know about CP or spinal bifida and other disabilities. I didn't have much knowledge of it till I joined Crip Chat and met people with it. And we just started talking about the things we deal with and stuff. So I think the disorganization comes from that. Like one, mm -hmm disabled people not really living in the same neighborhood type of thing or and that we all have our own disabilities and that's kind of what we're focusing on not disability in general but more like the specific disabilities that we all have and for the that's... record oh. i do bother priya every day <laughs> hector did you want to say respond to that yeah no that was uh that was really well said. Thank you. And uh, it's really good to be here. I'm, I'm just excited about just having this conversation with all of you guys because, um, I don't know, throughout my 38 years, uh, mostly advocacy work, you know, I got injured when I was drinking and driving when I was 17 years old. And then I ended up hitting two cars in a brick wall, which left me to be a quadriplegic. And so from early on, I pretty much became the Jerry Lewis uh, poster child on drinking and driving. So, hey, don't drink and drive because look what happened to Hector Del Valle, you know? So, and then I even had a brochure at one time that says, drinking and driving can be worse. I, I'm sorry, it says, drinking and driving can kill or worse. And then there was a picture of me. And all my friends came up to me and they go, really, dude? Like, you're worse than death? You know, sitting in that wheelchair <laughs> makes you worse than death, really, dude? I mean, right. what kind of message is that putting out there to people with disabilities, you know? So, so I changed the brochure and it said, you know, and this was back in the 80s. This is what this one was against drug drives were being developed and so forth. And, and it was just learning from loss, you know, because that's a more positive message because either you're either born with a disability or you, you know, you get a disability later on in life and you still have to grieve that loss, you know? So, so today at 55 years old, 38 years post injury, I mean, my norm is my disability, you know? Um, so, so getting back to the question, I think what finds us to be more um, disorganized is just the fact that we're so, we seem to be desperate to get our message out there, to get our stories out there. And that, that's right. I'm really loving the turn that we're seeing this because of COVID is that we're talking more about inclusiveness. You know, now it's not just about people with disabilities. You know, when COVID-19 hit, it's not just about people with disabilities. Now it's about all of us who are quarantined. Now it's about all of us who lack transportation, lack employment. You know, so now it's not just about the people with disabilities that want to get out and, and want to go get a job. Now it's, you know, a good percentage of the country that is now disabled. You know, so I think we're really, we're, it's an opportunity for us to really teach and educate this able-bodied, uh, you know, society here about what it is to do to deal with when you're lacking, you know, so when you're lacking employment, when you're lacking shelter, we need to come together. And so I think we're, I think we're getting away a little bit more from the disorganization. And like I said, this is an opportunity that we could get um, organized. And it's like people, you know, it's like shows like this. Pauline, your show, and, and, and I'd love, love to meet a lot of you guys here that do have your own Zoom chats and your own stuff out there because, you know, that's uh, exactly why we created uh, Living the Balanced Life was simply because we wanted to know how people are going to be dealing with not only their physical disabilities, but their mental health issues as well, depression, anxieties, you know, all those other things are bringing a lot of attention. And then I'm going to shut up, but uh, in regards to Biden thing, uh, yes, I thought it was really well yeah. done. I think you guys nailed it right on the head. You know, they, they, they talked about stuttering instead of generalizing it and talking about, you know, disabilities, period. So I think we need to be responsible for that part of it. I think we need to educate them about that and get that message out there. So thanks again, Pauline. And I, uh, I'm hoping that you uh, you make the appearance on our show soon as well. Thank you yeah. all. Happy to meet another person with a spinal cord injury. Because <laughs> and it's good to see you again, Hector. I enjoyed doing the speech with you last time. That's right. Oh my God. I see. I said, wow, she looks familiar. The graduation one, right? Oh, yeah, me, that's, how, that's how me and Hector met each other. And I was like, his name looks really familiar. And then I, oh, put, I was like thinking, is this guy from Florida? Is he from Miami or something? Because he sounded like, because I lived in Miami for many years. So I was like, are you from Florida, Hector? 
Did Hector leave? I am. I am. Okay, Central okay. Florida. I'm in uh, in Oviedo. Yep. Okay. Yeah. No, I watched the commencement. Um, it was like a virtual commencement for graduation for graduates of 2020, and I, I was yeah, awesome. very impressed with all of the the speeches. It's a great. That was a great idea, actually. Um, okay. Uh, go ahead, Tylia. If you wanted to pose another question, or yeah, I wanted to also say during the the democratic. Um, ceremony there was also someone with spina bifida i don't know if you guys saw that no part of it no i saw that i didn't watch the whole thing so i caught little like, bit. i think the first night there was somebody with spina bifida and her family telling her story oh I yeah i remember what she talked about it's really weird but i do remember her saying that yeah, and she had to find a bifida, and I was like, yes! Was it about <laughs> universal health care, probably, something like that, right? Yes, I think, I think you're right on that, Renee, yes, I think. Yeah. Oh, you know what, I want to, um, Paul put in the group chat, he said, heck, I'll bring up something uncomfortable. When I grew up in the old days, disabled kids, in an effort to try to fit in, avoided hanging out with other disabled kids. Um. Mm -hmm. mm. I did the same thing too. Hi, Herm hi. I didn't know you were here, Armani. <laughs> hey, I just joined. Sorry, I'm late. <laughs> it's okay. Hey, how you doing? Did anyone else? <laughs> does anyone else feel that or felt that at some point? I, 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 I did. Like, um, I'm the same way Paul was. Like, I avoided hanging out with the disabled kids growing up and going to school until I was in about middle school and I was stuck with them in one classroom because they wouldn't <laughs> let the ESE kids leave. So I had to become <laughs> friends with the disabled kids. Yeah. Yeah. It puts me to off the same, same way. Uh, I used to be in uh, special ed, you know, because I'm hidden here. And um, I want to be around normal people, you know, you know, you know, so it's like, like I had to choose. So, I mean, but I, I've been had to commit to disabled people, you know, because it's what I identify with, you know. I ain't treat them different. But I just want to fit in, you know, want to be normal or think about make everybody think I was normal. <laughs> and I feel the same way because, like, even though we're talking about media, magazines have to do with media, and I have the desire to be blonde and skinny because I <laughs> as a kid, as a teen, not being like rude or anything, but as a kid, you. I didn't see a uh, a black African American Latina girl in a wheelchair in the front of Sixteen magazine or People magazine. Right. You'll be I first. Know. You'll be the first, Tylia. <laughs> yeah, hopefully. <laughs> right. Contact contact those magazines. Yeah. And I saw just skinny Daisy Duke lookalikes, and I'm like, I want to be. Like, I even asked my mom if I could dye my hair blonde, and she's like, No. Yeah, I want it to be blonde, blue eyes, and be named Tiffany. <laughs> and, plus two, and plus two, I want to add to that people that don't have a physical disability that you can see, they automatically put limitations on people that have disability. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, that's the wrong way to go by the instead of them asking they will assume and put them like in a they will come and pit and hold them you know what i'm saying so i think that's the reason why me and talia uh when we were younger we we're trying to get away from from that because we want to be we didn't want people to treat us any different yeah. Well, and I think with media, it would help normalize that, right? Like it wouldn't, mm -hmm. it wouldn't be made, it wouldn't um, be something to be ashamed about, uh, to be like, you you know, you have black people hanging out, no one goes, oh, are you, like no one questions, 
why would you hang out with people like yourself? Um, but apparently we do. Um, and I'm so glad you brought up that up, Paul. And, and Hector said it took him 10 years to start hanging out with people with disabilities um, because of the stages of grief. Um, it took 10 years. Who to get said that? Because that sounds like me too. Who's Hector. Hector. Yeah. Yeah, Renee, did you want to say are. something to that? Mm -hmm. And I think that, that all counts with maturity uh, to finally point. It comes with maturity, uh, you know, um, when you hang with people that are similar to you, um, you can be you, you know what I'm saying? All right. If, well, you know what I'm saying? Oh, Tyler, you have to go? Yeah, CP's having a party. Okay. Thank you. We'll miss you. Thank you. Seeing you again, Talia. Yeah. Okay, we'll yeah. see you next week, Talia. Thank you. Um, okay, we have about 45 minutes left, um, but okay, um, what was I going to say? Sorry, Tylea leaving just threw me out emotional. No kidding. <laughs> um, uh, I forgot. Forget it. <laughs> well, I just think of those two movies I mentioned, because those are movies. They weren't TV shows. But so do you want to mention what they were? Cause you yeah, I, last weekend I saw a movie called Bean Rose. And it's about an older woman like myself who got diagnosed. It's interesting because they don't see exactly what she's diagnosed with. Mm -hmm. but, and then you kind of watch it, you kind of figure out it's ALS. But she does this thing where she does a road trip in her electrical wheelchair. Mm -hmm. Like it's just like she's a funky character, you know, kind of from the 60s. What's the name of that movie, Renee? Uh, called Bean Rose. Bean uh, Rose, okay. But uh, in the end, of course, she dies. You know. I don't think Hollywood knows what to do, how to end a movie. It looks like she died. Uh, Did she die on the road in her wheelchair? <laughs> no, no. She got back home. She got you know reunited with her son. You know, it was like la di da. But it was it was. <laughs> she had a wonderful <laughs> life. <laughs> and the other one, but I didn't yeah. watch it. I can't even remember. It was a documentary. I think it was called Any One of Us, and it was uh, a a story of people who get disabled later on and have issues. And uh, I'm going to watch it again this week and see if I can not fall asleep. <laughs> yeah. So, but I think that might be... There, there's a good movie called Awakenings with, um, with Robin Williams and Feathers in, in it is... What's it called? Like other guy. He comes out of sleep. He was in the seat for like years and years, and he was like a he like a grown man. Denise, and, I, and Denise, he's not showing. Denise, I think your connection is not okay. very strong. It's yeah, the sound is going. Your connection isn't very strong. The sound keeps going in and out. Would you mind typing the name of the movie that you were referring to, so we can refer to it later? Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I want to bring, like, you know, because I'm, I'm an artist. I went to art school, which is part of media as well. I'm just going to push that. I think art is also part of media. And um, my old, you know, like the photography department, I, I was a photographer. That was my major. And they're, they're just having, like, these Zoom meetings and looking at people's photographs and talking about them. And it's interesting. Interesting, because one of the things I noticed, because you know, when I was going to school there, I wasn't disabled yet. I hadn't had my injury yet, so you know, they they knew me as the non-disabled person. They knew I had an injury, but none of them really reached out and you know got to know what I was doing and stuff. So I actually showed them my work of you know the completely tilted back view from a lift and like all this work that's about disability. And one of the things I noticed that was interesting to me, they didn't really have anything to say because they, I think they, they all felt a little discomfort talking about it. And I was just like, disabled people, blah, 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 blah. Well, and I'm just like <laughs> talking about it and they're like just sitting there. They just don't know what to say. They're scared to say something. Then the woman before me, she shot, she was living in New York and she was next neighbors with these drag queens and they were getting all dressed up and she documented it and they had so much to say about that. And I was like thinking, this is, I don't know, I just found it interesting. And then the conversation started with uh, exploitation because, you know, photographers, 
you go and you take you photograph a subject and sometimes it can be exploitive some photographers are actually just looking for people like you know like what we're talking about ratings it's the same with art if you have a subject and you're you know and you're showing them you know pity a person in a wheelchair and you know kind of pulling at the heartstrings it you know it can be exploitive but you know it can also be like a view you know a view into a world you would never really know about so they were having that discussion and um the discussion started with this photographer this woman really liked and he i guess over the last weekend he like killed his wife and then killed himself and then she's like but i really love this photographer and everyone's talking critical and i was like well if you want my opinion in from the perspective of disability if this man killed his wife and then killed himself he probably had a mental illness so it's okay to like his photographs because he was mentally ill obviously obviously something was going on where he killed his wife and then killed himself so you know so i was like so this like idea of hating an artist or a musician because they did something that's right a you know in society's viewpoint really bad why aren't we ever talking about these people in that framework like what was their mental state like what was their mental like michael jackson for instance i love the jackson five i grew up on it but Michael Jackson obviously had mental illness and we don't really talk about it in that way. We're like, oh, he was a horrible person. He molested children. And maybe he did, maybe he didn't. I don't really know. But I definitely think Michael Jackson had a mental illness. So that's like, you know, my perspective on things like that. So, Well, when you do something that is not acceptable by society, like murder suicide or molesting children and you equate it with disability it like goes back to the villainizing disability representation um which is what the traditional role has been for people with disabilities yeah but i don't think it has to be like my i think the conversation is how do we get these people help because they have they all think have issues you know not like demon because they did a bad act but putting it in the framework of what was going on mentally with that. Like Joe Biden, for instance, he has a stutter, and people always make fun of him, of his like messing up and his speeches. And I told Robert, maybe it's because he has a stutter he does that. No, I didn't even realize Joe Biden had a issue with stuttering in his youth. And, and I told Robert, God, I never really knew that about Joe Biden. I was like, maybe the reason he messes up in his speeches is because he so, has so what's, what's Tom's excuse? What's I just I don't know. I'm not trying to get I'm into sorry. it. No, that's okay. Don't worry. Um, but you know, so that's like literally like what I just think I understand what you're saying, like the villainizing, but that's not really villainizing when you're saying what was what were the issues of this person and how could we have gotten them help so do you feel like bringing it back to the media conversation do you feel like that if it was represented more or talked about more in the media those things could be a, could have been prevented like they would know that it's okay to ask for help it's not a it's not a sign of weakness <laughs> exactly. and i think you know celebrity you know elvis and all these people like you know, no one, you know, no one ever, they, they demanded things and people just didn't question them because they were Elvis or Michael Jackson or whatever. So there's that issue too, the, the idea of celebrity and demanding things, you know, and not acknowledging like, you know, what was going on with mentally. Maybe not so much. Well, and there's a different, I don't know. Well, let me ask the question. Do you guys feel like there's a distinction between situational mental illness like would have El would elvis have died of an overdose and you know gone all um drugged you know with the ups uppers and downers if he was not elvis in a regular as a regular man or was it just situational same with michael jackson he was thrown in and you see that a lot with like young stars and then we consider it. it as like a mental illness but like 
So I don't know what the, like a meant, and I don't know. Okay. I don't, I'm, I'm not, I'm just putting it out there. I don't, I don't, cause I don't have a mental health disability, but those who have mental health disabilities, are they offended because they're considered in the same, like there's people who are actually born with like their brain and chemical makeup is physically different. And that's what creates the mental health disability. Well, I don't know. I don't, I, maybe they do get, you know, of course I don't know because I haven't really talked <laughs> with mental illness about these things, but I think that would be the same thing as being, um, offended for a person that was born with a disability than a person that's acquired a disability. I, I don't know. I just think situational. Oh, is yes. you, know, you, have to, you have to think about like, um, cause Michael Jackson was on a lot of drugs. Maybe that caused his mental illness too. You don't know. So there's a combination of things like, was it his family life? I mean, his father did abuse him a little, and I'm not saying that that caused mental illness, but it is a factor in that, you know? Yeah, just trauma, you know, some, some issues because of trauma, yeah. you know, some of it just goes un, un, undiagnosed. <laughs> you know, uh, untreatable, you know, where people don't get treated because people are either in denial and people around them enable them, you know? So it, I, I agree with what's being said. It, it's, uh, it's multiple variables, you know, as far, I don't yeah. think it could be one or the other. I think there's multiple variables. Yeah. And there's also, there's also triggers. So you have to know what those triggers are. And you know, we have like PTSD, like people that go fight war, you know, they don't, they acquire their mental illness, essentially. Yeah, PTSD is a big issue on mental illness. Women that are abused. You know, have men and women that are abused, though. Yeah. So, yeah, it's a huge, huge subject. And, you know, mental is just like such a huge basket of issues going on there. And I, I, I do think bringing it back because we don't really talk about mental illness and we've always, you know, I think especially mental illness is always kind of people with mental illness. It's hard to deal with. I have friends and it's very frustrating. Like I get mad at them and then I'm like, no, you have to understand. And then, you know, I, I need a couple of days off sometimes. I'm like, I just can't see that person. I just, uh, re-energize and then go back and try to see, you know, how a friend, you know? Yeah. I think cause it's an, it's an invisible disability. Um, it's harder to deal with like, like me not having arms and legs or, uh, you know, for those of us who are in wheelchairs or, you know, it's easy, like, Oh, solution ramp, you know, it's like very tangible <laughs> and um, maybe some people with mental health disabilities, it's not, or anyone with an invisible disability, it could be a learning disability. It could be, you know, I, you know, like Sam, he has CP, but he can pass, you know, like these different things. Um, it's sometimes uh, harder to, to respond to and how, you know, but yeah, you're right. No one in the media is addressing that. Like anyone, and, and maybe a little bit, you see celebrities coming out like um, Tom Cruise or, you know, people with dyslexia, like I have a disability, it's dyslexia. You know, you go to, into every like disability organization and they have like all the celebrities with disabilities, but <laughs> rarely is it a physical disability, you know? And they always come back. Like, I'm so sick of all these healthy disabled people. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like the media loves that, that story of fighting through something and getting you know, to the top of the mountain, literally. And, and it's not the way, I don't know disabled people at all. And not everybody has a life like that, you know? Right. Actually, right. I I read the I I listened to it. I didn't read it, but the disability disability visibility book that Aunt Alice Wong put out, and there's a story in there where the girl I forget the actress's name. I think her name's no, that's not I the actress's name. This actress, I think she got diagnosed with. I don't know, CP, maybe it's MS or something like that, and. And she 
went to an award show and you know she kind of she like came she let that vulnerable side show of herself as an actress and this person that was writing about it was like saying how happy she was that this actress mm -hmm. was letting the vulnerability of her human side show be due to her disability it, it was hard for her to get up and get dressed and like hold this pose and pose for the cameras which you know you know we don't really think about like hollywood kind of really plastic makes plastic in a way you know they gloss yeah, I hear, over I, it I, I hear where you're coming from i just i just feel like it's expected at some point that i'm supposed to or people with this are supposed to fight their way to to perfect health for their life that's that's the other side of this. Do you remember the guy that climbs Mount Everest? You know that kind of thing. Right, the the hero or the underdog overcoming their disability. Right, exactly, but but <laughs> it isn't like that. You know? Right, in right. Real life. No, it is. Now, real life is more you got to overcome your disability on a daily basis. Exactly. <laughs> I'm sorry, Denise. What? And then you could like, but nobody gives you a trophy at the end of the day. It says, "Whoa, I cleaned the kitchen floor today." <laughs> <laughs> Denise, did you want to say something? Um, do you guys remember Christopher Reeve? Christopher Reeve, yes. Yeah, was he in anything after he was in? He was. <laughs> right he didn't want me yeah something window is it that yeah uh now for hitchcock i uh, did a remake of alfred hitchcock rear window rear oh window. yeah that's right yeah rear window yes um yeah he was um, i guess that's the other thing we, we could point out I'm sorry. sorry go ahead hector the other thing that we want to point out is that um it's funny how um certain disabilities don't get enough attention, like um, whether it's autism or something, until a celebrity gets it. You know, what Ronald Reagan did for Alzheimer's, what, uh, what Fox did for um, what his disability is. Yes, Parkinson's. You know, it's until somebody with a celebrity or what Christopher Reed did for spinal cord injuries, you know? Um, it's, it's like with those celebrities, then, yeah, then the world wants to listen. You know, then they want to, throw all this money into research and, and to study it and stuff like that. So sometimes it sucks, but that's the truth. That's just the where, where our world is at, you know? If, if you don't have that celebrity status, you know, you're not gonna get a lot of attention on this, you know? Right. But if you have a celebrity status, you know, then people are, are wanting to listen, thinking, oh, wow, it happened to him. You know, it must be important, you know? So but meanwhile, Mm -hmm. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, so Hector, the, the secret is how do we all become celebrities then, right? Yeah. <laughs> right, I, I, eyebrow raise, eyebrow raise. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, it, I know it I totally agree with you. Yeah. Yeah. So Ryan did um a movie about a, an autistic girl. Well, I think there's a lot of um, attention on autism right now. I feel like they're. Uh, I have a question. Do, do books count as media, or is it just movies and TV? Books. I think done. books are media. Yeah, everything's media. I mean, books, oh. magazines. I've noticed a lot of books lately on the, what they're saying is the connection between trauma and disability, or trauma and sickness. And, I'm just not sure. I haven't read enough about it to know if I really agree with a lot of it, if it's just junk science. But. Well, I think, you know, that, but that makes a good point. The words we use in relation to disability are very negatively and like low vibrationally charged, right? Like trauma, tragedy, <laughs> the tragic, <laughs> tragic accident, um, you know, like uh, just like paralysis. Like, you know, it just, it, it just, feel <laughs> very ne like Negative. draining almost when you think about disease or you know it, you know even the word condition it's it, it just i don't know it just feels very negatively charged so um you know i, I 
the question that Cecil and Hector posed are, is very interesting. And I don't know if I know we have about 25 minutes and I do have to end, unfortunately, guys, at the 1230 exactly because I have to run to a birthday lunch. But um, the questions of so how do we approach then media and with what message can we come together as a community uh, to approach and, and represent who we are. So, and, and maybe that's the, where media is confused. Like, I don't know how to represent people with disabilities because these people over here want to be represented this way. These people over here want to be represented this way. And then they try it and then they're criticized for it. Right? Like, so. And there's a certain, and there's a certain image that needs to be portrayed for certain things. You have to have the ideal look. Right. After right and absolutely like puss girls they were all so beautiful so like even as someone with a disability i'm like yeah there's someone like wheelchair wheelchairs girls represented but i'm like oh but i don't look like angela rockwood you know i'm like i'm half filipino and half german and i don't look like that either so, um, so go ahead cecil but i think i think uh i think it goes back to what hester says that uh it has to be organized, not organization, but organized. So we have to, we, it's, we're not saying that one disability is important over the other. It's saying that, well, one, we need to identify our targeted audience, you know, for, you know, when, when we start the project. It makes sense. Identify audience. Our audience is people with disability, right? And the thing is too, what I think is too, is like, how can we, can we make it cool? How, you know, even though we're, we do have a physical disability, we're cool. We can do stuff other people can't, you know? Right, like and you post I, all your stuff. Yeah, no. And you really, you brought up a really good point, so I really like where you're going with this because, um, you know, first of all, you know, I think about adaptive sports, you know, because that's, that again, is a really cool thing. And right now in Central Florida, we're trying to get a lot of awareness around that. You know, we, we got WCMX. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of WCMX, wheelchair motocross, you know. And so we're, we're getting a lot of, and that's what it is. It's, it's mostly manual wheelchairs, uh, a lot of CP, a lot of uh, MS people that are in manual chairs, and they go into a skate park. You know, and they go into a skate park and they start jumping these ramps. And of course, um, Mr. Fotheringham, Aaron Fotheringham, which is called Wheels, uh, he started this off by joining, uh, he got and did something with, uh, uh, with the bikes and motorcycle people. And they did something called, the, they had this big show. And then he started jumping these really ridiculous ramps and stuff like that. So, so you know, going back to what, you know, Cecil and I bring it up, you really got to bring a really hot topic sometimes. I know the one that I brought up was adaptive sports that I'm just finishing up on, but even 10, 15, 20 years ago, I did a video on sex, you know, on sexuality, and it was called Sexuality Reborn with Dr. Alexander from Kessler's Institute. And, and the reason that I got involved with that was because, you know, I looked at some of the old, other sexuality videos, and they were like, you know, hippies from the 60s, you know, having sex with their catheter and leg bag hanging around, you know? We didn't want to do that. So, so I think you're right. I think, I think it's big, picking a topic that uh, the majority of the disability community can relate to and sex is happens to be one of them you know because either either people are portrayed as asexual that are disability they don't have sex they don't talk about sex or 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 the other way around you know so yeah you're right i think we got to get organized um and i think this is the way it happens is by groups like this pauline it's it's just by you know the people with disabilities who are getting this type of attention from all different types of disabilities can come together and have an inclusive message, meaning, hey, this is just about CP, this isn't just about amputation. This is about, you know, all of us who, who want to even label ourselves as disabled, you want to be included, you want to be heard, you want to be listened to, you, you know, you want to be treated equally. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I do, I do want to say what Paul said in the chat um, real quick, but I, I so Cecil, I think I interrupted you too. So did you want to finish your thought about making disability cool before I read Paul's? Well, I think Hester, 
already identified it, but I just kind of pick back off what he said. We need a hook, you know, a hook. Get people hook, you know, first, you know, by identifying what makes us unique. I think for Pia, it's the art. For you, you like to speak, you know, um, and do interviews. Um, Talia and is also in a band, which like to, you know, does that. But continue. Sorry, Susan. No, but it's like it's like yeah, it's like that. I I it just came to my mind. That's what makes us unique. But I did. Yes, we have the disability, but. We're still cool. This I may deal with this, but this is what I do. That makes sense. Yes. Or uh, people with disabilities, uh, diff, uh, uh, different, you know, uh, like green writers, you know, that's your, that's what makes you unique. That's your gift. Right. Right. Exactly. So I think. It's just, it's just uh, all not bring us together. It's just to find a hook. And once we hook the audience in, and then we can go in deeper about the disability part. Does that make sense? Yes, yes. So it's it's almost hooking with a relatable, um, like with a relatable topic leading with that. And then, oh, by the way, I have a disability. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. yeah. I mean, because who here just, I, I mean, I, you know, when someone asks me what I do, I'm not like, I'm just, I mean, I, I think I talk about my disability last when I'm talking about myself. So I, I don't think, I mean, you know, refers to it as a hook, but in a way we are all people and we have all these other things we do, like Pauline, you're a mom, you're a mom and wife. And, you know, so I, I think you even posed that question once when you talk about your identity, do you identify as disabled first? And for me, if someone asked me, oh, what, what are you? I'd be like, I'm Indian and I'm in a band and I make art. And, you know, after the long list of things, oh, yeah, and I had a spinal cord injury and I use a wheelchair and I'm disabled. So, you know, but so, yeah. I would I, say... I would say no right away because uh, they disability already has a negative spin on it. So when you say you're disabled right away, they're not interested. It's like a turn off almost. Yeah. We need to bring yeah. sexy back to disabled. Disability. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> disabled. Gavard was sexy, but you, I guess we could make it sexy. <laughs> Only to devotees, I guess. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Um, okay, I want to read Paul's. Um, I think this comment was going back to uh, when, you know, about mental health. And correct me if I'm wrong, Paul. Each person has a choice. He has a friend who was born with nothing, too abusive and alcoholic parents. She became emancipated at 15 and now is a valedictorian candidate at her university. Um, and in regards to the negative terminology, He's often been called a victim of CP. Yeah, you're a victim of. Um, and how about more disabled screenwriters? That's what he's doing now. And that's awesome, right? Like, it's not just about in front of the camera, it's what's behind the scenes. Yeah. Or, you know, and, the, and how people with disabilities can get involved in. And I feel like just being taken um, seriously, like what, you know, the credibility we bring so, hi, I'm Paul, I'm a screenwriter. Oh yeah, by the way, I have CP, you know, like, so the, the connection is I'm a screenwriter and you connect with other people who are in that, at that level in that industry. Um, and the, the <clears throat> CP is secondary. Um, and yeah, so and like, how can we be taken more seriously with credibility? Um, for that and so and that's why again going back to one leg up productions is like okay well not waiting for permission but if i could help create a media company that could be seen 
like reputable, then maybe that's something that they would take seriously. Um, I don't know if that's where it'll end up going, but maybe a little pebble in the big ocean that we can, I can contribute to. Sorry, yeah, Renee. Do we have, um, does the disability community have any money for this? I mean, is there, are there any big donors like other groups have big donors? Yes. It all depends what disability you have. <laughs> I think um, the, is it the Ruderman Foundation? Um, that is really trying in, to get involved with Hollywood and disability. They, they reach, they, they hit several aspects with, in regards to disability, but I know one of their tenants is um, media representation of people with disabilities. I don't know if anyone can correct me if that, or confirm if that's correct. I've heard of them, but I don't, I'm not sure if that's what they're specifically doing. I know there's a Screen Actors Guild too for specifically for people with disabilities, but I don't know how they're related or. Yeah, I don't care either. But then you see like um, someone who is like Amy Purdy, she makes disability sexy. I don't know, she's the Paralympian and she really brought more attention to prosthetics. She has, she's below, um, the, she's leg amputees. So she like do these really cool, and she's a model as well. She's beautiful. And she'd have these really cool, like her prosthetic legs, but it's an aquarium or it's like her, like, <laughs> Like I think you know, I've seen her. I, I just I just don't remember her name, but I think I've seen her before. Yeah, so Amy Party and then like people like Zach Anner or people the guy the kid the guy who played um the main character in Speechless with CP. But are they accessible? So like if I called them up and I said, Hey, so and I've done that. Hey Bethany Hamilton, I live in Hawaii, I'm disabled. Would you be willing to be on my show? And the answer is not right now. I'm I'm busy. So the people that are at the top aren't even giving time to the people who are also trying to elevate this whole disability conversation. I don't know. Yeah, it's that whole it's that whole saying. Hey, when you make it big, don't forget the little people. You know. So that's yeah, yeah. That's true. I'm thinking of just the able the able bodied people. You know, who 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 don't have a disability. Um, you know, they, they all had to, you know, put their nose to the grind. I mean, they, they had to do it. I, and, and I think with people with disabilities, you know, we say don't, we don't want to be treated specially, but we can't then come back and say, oh, but I'm disabled and this is an important topic. You know what I'm saying? I mean, we really got to hit the grindstone just like anybody else does. You know, we got to keep trying and keep putting our efforts out there and, and just keep having these conversations. So I think this is the way... We do it just like everybody else does it. You know, we can't say that just because we're people with disabilities that we have something more to offer. You know, we, we have what we have to offer, just like anybody who doesn't have a disability, they have what they have to offer, whether it's their skills or talents, whether they're a writer or an athlete, whatever. Mm hmm Yeah. Okay. Sorry, go ahead, Cecil. I wanna add one more thing to what Hedge said. He hit the nail on his. It's like, yeah, we we are disabled, but we can't wait for permission, you know, or for someone to give us the hand. You know, we have to kind of do our own research. If that makes sense, we have to we have to go after. It. As they, you know, as they, you know, if people want to help us along the way, they can. But we can always expect. Hey, I didn't fight with you. I, I didn't fight with you. Can you help me? They ain't gonna bust off because they they had to build it themselves. You know, you ever heard the saying, "If you build it, they'll come." Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think, you know, I, I challenge everyone on this call to not wait for yeah, nothing. Yeah, if you yeah, want something yeah. in life, you yeah, have to go get it. Do your research. And then, you know, um, people on the, the way will help you. Yeah. Well, and one of the yeah, points I mean, that Keely Catwells yeah. made on my show was, and support them, like support fellow disabled creators and influencers um by you know following them or you know however they do you do that um and you know if a lot of us are on social media 
and I spoke with um, Cole and Charisma, who are huge on social media, and they said yes. the key to sponsorship is engagement. So, like, you know, even if you put a heart as a comment, you know, with with different things that Priya is doing or what Cecil's doing, or you know, I don't Paul Hector, I don't know, or Anna or Denise or Imani, I don't know if you guys are on social media, but like, let's share, put it out on Crip Chat. I'm not. Um, on my Facebook group, I'm not going to be one of those people like, don't promote, like, no, promote the heck out of yourself and like, let's support one another. But that's also part of it. We can't complain that we're not being allowed in or being represented when we're not even willing to support other fellow disabled um, creators. Uh, so I think that's really important. Sorry, go ahead, Hector. Sorry. No, great, great stuff, man. I know you, I know you got to bring it to an end. So I just can't tell you how excited I am. Um, how do we stay in touch with everyone here, Pauline? And I guess the other thing I wanted to ask you is, um, how do we get a copy of this? Because I would love to share this, if that's allowed, to share a copy of your show tonight here, you know, with oh, people yeah. that I know. And I'm not making no promises. I'm just saying I would love to share this show with, uh, with you know, a couple of doctors that I know of and just, you know, put it out there. Let them know, hey, this is the conversation we're having. What do you think? You know, and I just want would like to get their input on that as well. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Mm -hmm. um, well, yeah, I, I definitely can respond to that. Um, so I will take this recording and put it on YouTube, uh, and the link will be there. So I'm on One Leg Up Productions as uh, my YouTube channel, and also uh, if you got this link, that means you're on the uh mailing list so you'll get you'll get the link every time like every thursday i send out um a, a reminder and an announcement of what the topic is and then saturday morning two hours prior or saturday my morning two hours prior to the event then you'll get another reminder that it's starting soon and then we well you're already also on our facebook page called crypt chat via uh crypt chat club via zoom um and, and then for the email group too so yes okay yeah so you mean the disability chat the, yeah the email the messenger whatever the facebook yeah. messenger yeah so um uh, some of us are on a facebook messenger do you want to priya do you, would you mind inviting him uh, oh yeah i just it, i just added you have to oh okay <laughs> she's so good I was, like, I was like i just added <laughs> And Priya's, Priya's, on it. Yeah, Priya's been amazing because she actually took initiative and started a Instagram page for us called Crip Chat. So you can okay. follow on Instagram as well. Hey, I gotta get on that. Yeah, I know Instagram. <laughs> I'm more of a Facebook girl, but I'm I'm really starting. I'm more of an Instagram person, so that's why I was like, let me start a Crip Chat on Instagram. <laughs> Thank well, then listen, yeah, no, nah, then I, I, I put out my, the same invite and thanks for putting that out there, Pauline. Um, so then I'll do the same thing because I, I do two shows. I do one, I do one called uh, Living the Balanced Life, which I do with uh, Dr. Max. She likes to be called Dr. Max. Uh, she is a uh, clinical psychologist. And then the other one is with uh, Dr. Alexander, who does something called Sustaining Our Abilities. And I would really encourage all you guys to just get involved in that one because that's trying to spread the message out there to, you know, everyone with a disability around the world um, in regards to, you know, especially those people that have no access to the media, you know, they're, they'll even provide them with a tablet or, or some sort of Wi-Fi or at least try to connect them with a professional, whether in their village or within their community, you know, to get services. So, and I'll, and I'll try to send out an email to everybody out here, at least Pauline, if I could send it out to you and then yeah. you can just send it out to all your people as well. Too. Yeah. So I love the idea. Let's just share information. Let's continue to share information. Absolutely. So um, I have a friend on Facebook, Hector, even though I don't use it as much, but you know, I like to make friends. <laughs> 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 is awesome. So Hector, and I know, I know you've been posting living a balanced life, um, but the Zoom link, the, the flyer that you post isn't clickable. So if you could put the Zoom link in the comments or in the, in the caption of the flyer that you post, that way people could just click on it easily. Um, for some people, it's a little harder to type all of those 
does that? No, you're you're absolutely <laughs> right. There's we're so embarrassed about that, you know, because it's supposed to be a clickable link, and uh, people saying, "Dude, I'm clicking, nothing's happening." You know, so, <laughs> well, it's like, no, I appreciate that we're working on that. It's like Funny. I want to join, but but I need the ramp. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, so. Yeah, so feel free to post both of those, sustain our abilities and living a balanced life on the Facebook group page. And if you send me um, those links as well, I can help promote it to our uh, mailing list, which by the way, guys, I know there's only a few of us that show up here, but it's like almost 60 people that are on the mailing list for the Crypt Chat Club. Um, and that's a, I feel like that's a big thing. And I'd love to celebrate that because uh, apparently there's something that people want to connect with. I don't know if they're just watching the replays on YouTube, but they are interested enough to sign up. So that's a good thing. Uh, people are signing up for the newsletter. Is that what you just said? For the emails. Yeah. That I sent out. So even though there's only like usually nine of us that show up here, um, there's, there's like almost 60 people that are on the mailing list itself. Oh yeah. 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 Oh, cool. Yeah, so I think we're all doing something great. So any final words about media and the disability before we, and then it, any feedback on what you guys want to talk about next week? Well, I was, I talked to you about. Oh maybe. yeah, never mind, next week's taken. <laughs> Do you want to announce what it's about? <laughs> well, I want to talk about like the world of med you know we all think like doctors and the medical world is like a place where we can get answers for what we're dealing with you know but it it it's not always like that and you know and how doctors kind of have ableism like the medical industry is very it has a lot of ableism in it and it's not good for the disabled community to have to deal with ableism in their medical care so yeah so i to kind of talk about things that they've dealt with and yeah so priya you'll be facilitating that conversation next week yes awesome awesome okay mm -hmm. i'm so excited um i hope everyone has a beautiful <laughs> week any final any final words any final words that sounds so that's not that sounds so final <laughs> Final words before we say goodbye. Keep <laughs> being a rock star. Keep being a rock star. All right. I love it. I love it. Yeah. Let's make disabled cool. <laughs> make disabled cool again. <laughs> well, I think now some of us are here doing that. Like what Cecil was saying, like, like when I became disabled, I was like, you know, I was in a band and I was an artist and I was like, people were like, why don't you go to college? And I already went to college, so I didn't really want to do that again. So I was like, Oh no, I, I just want to do what I've been doing because I've dedicated a large portion of my life to it. Well, and there's this, um, there's this assumption that because you became disabled or now have a disability that your interest changed. Yeah. Right? And like, I'm, I'm like, no, I want to play music and I want to make up. Like, yeah, I yeah absolutely. Like, as with someone that is diagnosed with a disability at a young age, it's perceived that we can't do anything. So it's interesting. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Or they were put on the perpetual student track. Just go to school. Yes. Go to school. Go to school. Go to school. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's right. All right. Okay. And Paul, you're trying to promote your Facebook, your book on Facebook. Um, Put it out, yeah, and if you put it, post your book out on uh, Crypt Chat Club Facebook group also, please. Like, yeah, post your and, and I also started a jewelry business, so oh! if I can. <laughs> awesome, jewelry. Okay, yeah, so I'll post that up, there. I'll post it up, I'll post my business up there as well. Yes, please, please do that. Cool. That's so cool, I mean, um, I love jewelry, but I, I really can't wear a lot. No rings and right. rings can get in my way. And I, and I'm, my necklace is my wedding ring, so I can never take that off. But anklets, I love anklets, but um, there are tons of people that love jewelry and I we would love to support you. I can buy gifts for people. Okay. <laughs> 
And Imani, you should video, you get your brother to video you making jewelry. Yeah, I will. You should totally do that. And people love time-lapse videos. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, guys. I love you guys. Have a wonderful week. Thank you, Renee, for showing up. And I just wanted Bye. to say, Renee, that your hair looks gorgeous. <laughs> I know. That's the weeding hair. You're on mute. You're on mute, mute Renee. <laughs> You're still on mute. Hit the space bar. There you go. There you I was go. just going to say it's because I didn't brush it. That's why it looks good. <laughs> well, it looks wild and fancy. <laughs> yeah, that's what happened. I washed my hair. I lay out. Never mind. I have funny frizzy hair. I'm Italian. I'm half Italian. There you go. It's gorgeous. If, if I could have that much hair, it's at 60, over 60, I, I'd be very happy. Oh, sweet. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I'll see you later, guys. I know it's always so hard to go say goodbye. I did. <laughs> Bye. 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 Bye.